Well, after my last video where I show to render a cell shader in ZBrush and Photoshop, uh, it was just brought to my attention that actually I could have show to do it only in ZBrush. Um, this video will be showing today how I achieved this fairly similar result with some or less more success in ZBrush, 100% ZBrush. Here on those image Photoshop, I've only been used for, to uh, cut and pass those characters and maybe those very, very slight uh, curve color character at the end, but nothing more. Um, I will be showing uh, this model of mine, then I will be showing uh, how I did it on the, a model from my friend Augusto Venturi that did model this amazing Acura, and uh, I will also show it on another model. As you can see, I try to achieve very different and distinct look between those three uh, models. Um, furthermore, as you can remember, I did ask you last time, since I don't put any advertising in my video, to do something nice for people around you, maybe, an older, uh, maybe a homeless guy on the street, just buy a massage or something like that. But today I will be a little bit more selfish and ask you later to check some of my product that I will be pimping in the middle of the video. So I guess uh, we shall get started. Well, let's start with a simple one. Um, file, open, box, ZBrush, video, crew, ZPR. Okay, what I'm bringing here is a full ZBrush project, meaning that uh, all my post-processing filter are already set up. I will turn them off and uh, show you exactly what each one of those is doing. Instead of doing a uh, step-by-step, I prefer to do um, deconstruction video where basically I show you the, the image and uh, how it was achieved. Okay, let's do uh, a render in ZBrush. So far the good, you can see all the results that we have here in those area, those outline, the posterize effect, but actually I will change the material to something a little bit more passant. Uh, or about sketch shader 4, that's the one I have, then uh, maybe something a little bit uh, sketch 4. Okay, great. Let's render it again and see what's going on right there. Okay, render. First, you can see that I'm using uh, the 3D posterize effect. This is in real time what it's doing. It's basically like in Photoshop, it's a posterize effect in uh, real time. Let's put it back somewhere around 14 and hit render again. So, and now I will be going through my DPR filter, which are basically where the magic is happening right now. Let me turn them all off. Here, here, and here, and go again through them. The first one is basically a paint. What it gives me is just a slight, um, color over the cavity maybe so if you want you can see it here and those area then we move forward with another paint which give me the nice outline around my character example if I go here and start to change the color to maybe something more red you can see it here it will go to something more blue actually because I like blue blue is cool and uh, we will move a little bit our edge detect and then you can see exactly what's going around. I'm exaggerating the effect right there just for you to see it. And furthermore, we move into a sharpen filter. Not always indispensable, but in this case, it gives me a, a nice sharp image. Then we'll move to some bluish blend mode. You see on screen, the blue gives me more colorization. Then uh, I move into an intensity. It's barely visible, right? I'm actually I'm using at minus three to get more darkness into my rendering. But this time let's put it at 35. And uh, let's continue. I'm using another colorize. Just uh, let's change the color to yellow. It's going actually in the cavity and the edge. Uh, here, cavity reduce a little bit. Then F7, I have an Orton. I don't actually understand what Orton is doing, except, I mean, I don't understand the way it works, but I understand why I use it, and it's allowing me to brighten certain areas of my image in relation to each other. 
and uh, f8 we did have nothing anymore but we could just for the sake of it put a red filter with an intensity of 70 and red 100 and it's actually what it gives you so obviously this look is a little bit different than the first image i did show you in the intro but i changed those parameters for you to see exactly what they are doing so, and now we have a look actually that looks like something from the from the 50s now uh, the good news is that uh, i will give you in the description of the video a link about where to download exactly this same file with a filter already good to go which will allow you to uh, take it apart so i think at this point we should just move to the next one so the the next one is way more stylized actually um first i start with a very 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 wide uh, camera angle which give me a very distorted view I'm sorry I have to apologize uh, I'm kind of sick today and my voice is kind of down uh, meaning that my accent is even worse than it always is but I mean we are not here to hear me talk you're here to see some result and see get some idea about uh, workflow so again let's move the camera somewhere uh, what I will be doing before doing the rendering is turn off all of those filter and I will turn them on after the fact so, uh, render, let's turn this one off and off. I still have one on, this one is on, and this one is off. Now everything is okay. Let's do a render, something like that. Let's take a little bit more time because I have a lot of geometry. We are clocking at actually, no, we don't. We are clocking at. Uh, 7.5 million approximately which is not that much but I'm calculating AO that's probably what takes some time it's not too bad I'm quite happy with the, the speed actually of the ZBrush render um, <clears throat> is that the way I do it most of the time not definitively not I still prefer to render uh, in multipass like I did show you in the last video I think it gives me a lot more control over what I'm doing but just for the sake of argumentation I wanted you to see it okay uh, let's go to render Render property, as you can see, 3D posterize, we are at uh, 180, which is almost the maximum we can go. Give me a nice look, especially in those areas. Look very technical. And uh, let's go into those BPF filter. First one is just a paint here to give me the nice outline around my object. Um, I did change a lot on those parameters. You can see my edge detect at 0.268 put it a lot higher but let's put it back now you see actually all those values are affecting the render uh, this file I would not give it out but that's the same idea as the one I would be giving out anyway with a little dude running around uh, let's continue F2 what do we do on F2 we have a very 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 subtle paint effect in blue F3 we have a sharpen which I always use this time a little bit more you can see it start to be very sharp uh, then we move to S4 where what do I do here here I put a paint with a very slight outline you can see it here on that area in here it start to look like a colored pencil sketch um, let's continue F5 I give it uh, an intensity kick just to make it more like uh, something that it fed out on the paper then continue with F6 paint that give me uh, more back into the, the red tone I mean actually it's more orange but I, my monitor look a little bit more reddish uh, more blue you can see it here kind of like the orange and blue like the blue orange uh, let's continue with F8 some paint which is actually changing the look completely and going more into the yellow which I kind of really like actually and that's where I start to go crazy at some noise which generally again stuff I prefer to do in Photoshop because I can control more or less where the noise is going I mean I can control it also in ZBrush but I have way more control in Photoshop again there is nothing right or wrong in the way of doing it it's just me being maybe not as Let's put it this way, I prefer to have more control over each one of those layers because I never really know from the get-go what I want to achieve 
and I don't have two because I generate those images for myself. When, now, when they are for a client, it's even more complicated because I have to follow some guideline. But in this case, I can just play around in ZBrush. Let's continue. 10 will be a slight paint, very, very, very minimal. You can see it here. Here, those gray area. And uh, 11 is more noise. Again, very subtle, not too much. And 12 is just a blue filter on top of each other to bring it back into the purple. Um, I'm not so sure that I like this filter actually, that's why I would take it down to 5 and stay around with that uh, sketch painted look, which I really enjoy personally, but uh, to each one is on. So I guess it's time to do a small break and uh, I will be ping ping my stuff out and then we move back to the Acura one. I guess it's time to pimp out some shit. Okay, um, again, as you guys know, I try to not have any advertising in my YouTube video. My YouTube video are free, um, most of them. I mean, I have some video for sale like in the moon and uh, somewhere else, I don't even remember where they are. But the fact of the matter is that over the last two years, I started to a very interesting partnership with a model company called Industria Mechanica. And uh, we did bring a couple of uh, model art. Here we have the Estafette, which is our latest model. Completely done in ZBrush, by the way. Rendered in Octane. Uh, at some point, I might even do a video about it or show what I did. Anyway, I will invite you to visit uh, the Industria Mechanica webpage, which you will find here, Industria Mechanica. And uh, you will find some product by me and also by other amazing artists that are doing really, really, really cool stuff. Um, let's see what Monsieur Des have done. We have the Estafette, meaning you can uh, shop here, click here somewhere, and it's opening. And uh, no, there is no link here. I'm very bad at pimping out stuff. Uh, land. Let's see if the Estafette is here. And yes, you can see it. It's on pre-order. Right now we have a five percent off. Uh, what else do we have? We have a lot of really cool model here. Not only mine, but from different artists which are very, very well renowned in the industry. Um, let's pick uh, more stuff from Monsieur Des. Uh, I did some hair object. Um, the Red Star. Oh, the Red Star. You see, we are out of stock, but soon it will be back. I will really recommend this one if you like model kit. This one is completely done in ZBrush. Actually, you know what? All those models are done in ZBrush. That's why I feel uh, not out of place of pimping, pimping them out in this video. Uh, then I have some character that I've done here, uh, even more character. Um, that stuff is not too expensive, actually. Total for $35 for four 35 millimeter figurine. It's quite nice. Uh, for the people that are interested into it, we try to keep everything or as much as possible made in America. I know I'm French, yeah, but I live in America and I believe in supporting the American economy and um, we try to work only with collaborators that are based in the US. It's not always possible because of the 3D printing, but everything like casting, printing of the, the, the box and the material, the creation of the model, everything at least for my model, we try to keep it made in America. Um, more character that I've done, let's go under C, and uh, I have more of those which are specific, oh sorry, for c cyberpunk and um, steampunk, uh, sorry I say cyberpunk, I didn't mean steampunk, and uh, I have some submariner like uh, Kind of why I'm CA guys. It's nice to say in the well, you know, like in the navy and stuff like that. And then we have uh, aviation guys, which are same ideas, teamish, uh, steampunk. But anyway, uh, I hope uh, you will spend at least five or six minutes on this web page. And even if you don't order my product, by all means, please look if you find something that tickles your fancy, because there are some really amazing stuff. Ali. The last one, uh, let me show you the large figure. Just this one, that one is amazing. It's to cry for. And you know what? I will show you my favorite one. And uh, I'm very excited to see that some are coming very soon. Uh, the one by Derek Stenic here, this one. An amazing model. Um, I did buy it myself. I did not 
build it. Actually, by the way, I have a friend that is supposed to uh, build it and paint it for me. And if he's watching this video, I'm really waiting for that model to be done since a year. But anyway, as you can see, every, those models are super detailed. It's crazy. So let us go back to uh, ZBrush and uh, the Acura bike from my friend Augusto Venturi. And here it is. Um, let's start with uh, Canada by himself. Then we add uh, the glass from the bike bike and everything is there so uh, I know I could have probably subdivided the glass a little bit more but I prefer to keep it this way it kind of uh, break the style a little bit I kind of like that uh, let's go a little bit further away move the bike here and see what's going on actually we will do the same as before I will turn off all my filter as you can see I'm posterizing at 40 which is quite good enough actually and the uh, BPF filter we have them all turned on. Let's turn everything off. So the sketch is just a sketch app too. Should be good and render. Render will take some time, but not too much. So the render is done now. I'm quite happy actually with the raw render. Um, I could actually even use it, but now uh, I still want to do the BPF filter. First one. First one is a paint. It's a very subtle one. It's just to darken some uh, area in the cavity. Second one is a sharpen again, which is very useful. Actually, this one might be a little bit too strong. Let me take it down to 50 approximately. It should be good, 51. Then let's like move to another sharpen. Then we have a paint, which is just very slight coloring, especially in the wheels. Um, let's move into another paint, which is for the outline. I don't know if you can see it in the video, maybe with the YouTube compression, it might be annoying. Let's see if we can change the color of this one and make it uh, green, all about green. Yeah, you can see it better, but it's very ugly. That's why we are going back to the, the original color here, yeah, somewhere like that. So, um, then maybe we will make it a little bit darker still. So, better. Let's continue. Six, we have another paint, which is again, just, just a little bit of darkening in the cavity, this time with a brown color. Then continue with the posterize, which is very subtle. It's almost invisible in the, the video. Uh, another sharpen with the, the screen mode, which allows me also to sharpen and to brighten everything. Then we go into a slight blue filter on the screen mode. See, blue. See it here, it gives an almost, almost chromatic, chromatic aberration effect, but I don't want to call it that way. Just say it's a blue filter and take it, take it down to 45 again. 15, we have some noise, always nice to have some noise, very subtle. Then another sharpen, and finally, some red coloring filter, very, very subtle. So, and this is what we have again. Um, I will give you a link to one of those files, obviously not the Canada from my friend Augusto and not uh, the other project I'm still working on with the car, but you will be able to play with the little dude with this uh, gas canister. I hope you will have fun. I hope you did enjoy this video, even if um, it was more um, um, showing off of uh, workflow more than how to do it exactly. Um, it's just up to you to go through it and um, explore. I just wanted to have this